Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is the Breaking Free Show, and my name is Marilyn Shannon, and I am delighted to have you all here with us today. I am actually still in uh, Pompano with my mom, so I'm not in the studio. So pardon the sound if it ain't great, but I'm doing the daughter thing. So thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that. Sometimes, you know, you just have to do what you got to do. But we're here, and I'm delighted. I'm not, hey. How are you? Hello, Marilyn. I'm fine. Thanks. Yeah, you're doing all right, I'm done. Yeah, I need to put the AC on. You have to do what? I, we have to put the AC on. Oh, really? It's hot? It's hot. Ah, it's hot here too. I can't imagine. Oh, my goodness. It's hot here. So, anyway, glad you're all joining us, and I hope you're all doing well. And, you know, I just I pray that we all just stay well, stay connected and just get through this. Everybody in the entire world is experiencing this. I don't think there was ever a time in my lifetime or to my mother's lifetime, and she's 94, where the entire world was on the same page. So I just pray every day that we get through this. And you know, when we get to the other side, I know that it's going to be a very special day. So with that, I want to just remind all of you that you are more than welcome anytime during the show to please call in at 919-518-9773 right into the studio. And you can also join us in the chat by putting your name, nickname, whatever you like under our video. And you can comment or ask questions and engage with us there. We'd love to have you in any way that you want to come in. And you also can join us on Skype Voice. That is not a picture, so it doesn't matter how you look. But by now, I think people don't even care how they look. They're just Zooming and <laughs> Skyping and all that doesn't matter. So just come in at computers, that's plural, then the number 2K voice. And we'd love to invite you in anyway. So let me introduce to you my guest today, Amanda. Hey, Amanda. <laughs> Good afternoon, Marilyn. How are you doing today? I'm doing actually really well, knock on wood. I'm. Um... I'm in Colorado, and it's beautiful. I feel very blessed to live here, and to, I'm, I live right on the river, and so um, I could just flip my computer around and show you my view, and so it's, I'm uh, self-isolating in my, in my little condo on the river in Basalt, Colorado, with my golden retriever. We're glad to have you. And it's just us. Good. Well, I'm, uh, I got a little pond in the backyard, so I can flip myself around, too, and see some water. <laughs> so, Amanda, <laughs> tell everybody about who you are. Oh, so <clears throat> I'm Amanda Boxtel. Uh, the accent is Australian, and I've been here for 30 years, but I, I think still managed to keep my accent. Um, I'm 52 years old and I was paralyzed when I was 24. So I've been paralyzed longer in my lifetime sitting than I have standing and walking. But I now walk in a different way with the use of advanced bionic exoskeleton technology. And I utilize that to my advantage to help maintain my range of motion my flexibility, my ability to, to bear weight on my limbs and uh, to, to have a better quality of life and to um, reduce any secondary complications associated with my paralysis. But these last few weeks, Marilyn, I haven't had access to that technology and I can just feel my body seizing up. I can, you know, this is why I created the program uh, that, called Bridging Bionics Foundation. And, um, and I, I can feel my legs stiffening and tightening. I have, um, you can see, I have a therapy mat right behind me and uh, I try and get on that every day, um, but it's not enough. It's not the same as walking in a bionic robot. So first of all, tell us about the, the bionic robot. So uh, I worked for a company. I was invited as one of the first paraplegics in the world to test pilot 
a prototype bionic exoskeleton suit for, it was back then called Berkeley Bionics. They've since been rebranded to Exobionics and they're now out of Richmond, California. And they created the Exo, back then it was called E-Legs. They didn't have a clinical team. They had engineering geeks who were just amazing that created this ro robot. And um, I was really mobile. I was a professional speaker, uh, an athlete. And it was a small world story where they heard that I could speak and I could, um, I took care of my body. And they thought, okay, let's bring Amanda out to test pilot this device. And no pressure, it was for National Geographic Television. And I had four days to master this thing and to stand up independently and walk on my own without any assistance. Now, remember, it was a rope, I was a prototype. And so it so was. Can I interrupt you a second? Yes. Cause, cause yes. I, okay. So, because I want to, I don't want to forget, forget about the fact that now you can't use it, but I did want to get a picture of what it, of what the history was and what that means to you now, because it's a whole nother story. So prior, first of all, prior to that, what did you do? Prior to, to walking yeah. in the exoskeleton? Yeah. yeah. So uh, originally I was a school teacher and um, I taught fourth grade many years ago, showing my age now. And, um, and then I created a, a, after I was paralyzed, which is a story in itself, I, I'd be happy to share with your audience. Um, I, I then co-founded a program called Challenge Aspen, which is a recreational program in Colorado that helps individuals with any disability to get back into their life and recreate and to move forward by using recreation as that bridge to regaining life and having fun. And so I, I learned to ski again. And, oh my goodness. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so were you a teacher after you had been uh, with the paralysis? Were you teaching then when you were? Well, I was, a, I was a primary school teacher in Australia prior to my, I had a skiing accident. And um, and I'll share that with you in a minute if you want. And yeah, I want to know the I want to know the timeline, I guess. Okay, well, let me start from the beginning, and I'll take you through yeah, the yeah, exoskeleton yeah. And, and bridging bionics, the program that I created. Do you want me yeah. to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've got it. Um, so <clears throat> I was a primary school teacher, and I fell in love. I was a typical woman, Marilyn, and I followed my heart to Colorado. And our classes, we taught grade four and our classes corresponded. And we all wrote um, handwritten letters. We didn't have email back then, as crazy as that sounds. And, uh, and we sent cassette tapes back and forth. And then I was invited to meet this class and the teacher and the relationship grew in the correspondence. And I came over and um, I fell in love with not only the place, uh, the mountains, um, the man originally. And, uh, but then it, it just became a part of me and a part of my being. Um, <clears throat> a couple of years later, I, I learned to ski. I had never skied until I came to Aspen, Colorado. I learned to ski and I went up on the chairlift for the first time of the day around noon i was an an intermediate kind of average skier um and as soon as i got on the chairlift i felt as if a, a wave swept through my body it was a premonition of sorts as if i had no business being on the mountain that day i got off the chairlift and i looked out at the view as though i was looking for the last time and two people tapped me on my shoulder and they asked if I was okay. And I said, I kind of shook it off and I said, yes, I'm fine. I just need to ski down. So on purpose and to remain visible, I skied underneath the chairlift. I stopped again on the flats and I looked out at the view 
again as though it was for the last time. I took off and about oh, three yards, four yards, <clears throat> I crossed my tips and I did a somersault and I landed on my back. In a split second, I was paralyzed. An electric current zapped through my legs. They crumbled on top of me and there was nothing. It was as though someone had turned out a light switch. I felt an electric current. It was like a zzz that went through my legs and then they just crumbled on top of me. And my head was downhill. I was looking uphill. <clears throat> a man in a neon orange suit as if to signify the emergency of the situation. It was this neon orange suit. It was 1992. He called for help. He said, I've called Ski Patrol. Ski Patrol came and they asked me, you know, how many fingers do I have up? Two, how many now? Four, what's your name? Where do you live? And all I can remember saying was, I answered the questions, but I said, I, I can't breathe. I can't feel my legs. I can't move my legs. It was that instantaneous. They very gently uncrumpled my body and held my head so gently and cradled it. And they lifted me onto a backboard and they took me down on a toboggan. I was flown on a flight for life to St. Anthony's Hospital in Denver. And not long after, I think it was a week or uh, so, something like that, a young man strode into my hospital room and he had the white jacket, but his face seemed younger than mine. His face screamed medical student. <laughs> he had been sent to deliver the news. Amanda, you'll never walk again. And those words resounded in every cell of my body. And I wanted to prove him wrong. I wanted to prove the doctor wrong. <laughs> and I wanted to prove God wrong. And I wanted to walk out of that hospital. And here I am today, 28 years later, when I'm still sitting in my wheelchair. I don't know if you can see in my yeah. wheelchair. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it's my reality, but I haven't let it eat me. And even though that mountain, Marilyn, uh, robbed me of the use of my legs, <laughs> didn't rob me of my spirit. And um, I, it almost, now I'm a better skier than I ever was before. How do you and ski now? How do you, how do you ski now? I ski on a, I'll send a video that you can oh, yeah, post. Please. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. can post later and it'll show me skiing, but I ski on a mono ski, which is a single ski. And I've got a bucket, a seat over a single ski. And I have two outriggers on my arms with baby flip skis on the ends. And they help me initiate a turn. And so I'm, I whiz down the mountain. I have a need for speed. Mm. I love it. It's so liberating. When I go to the top of the mountain, I say a prayer to the wind. And I'm free. And I'm dancing again on the snow. I used to be an athlete the former athletics captain of my school, a sprinter, a runner, but I was a dancer. And I did classical ballet. And, and now I feel like when I ski, I'm dancing. Amanda, let me, can I ask you a question, honey? And you are beautiful. It is Thank just, you. It is an honor to be able to talk to you today. And what a, what a, what an angel you are, especially in this time in all of our lives, because so many people are struggling with so many things. 
you know, with fear, with this, with the virus, with everything. And here you are, you know, sharing so much of what you've been through. So I want to ask you, so you ski, most people, or a lot of people, or let me talk about me people, <laughs> that if I to go down the mountain, period, right? Mm -hmm. So are you, are you past fear or do you just never had fear? No, I think fear, fear is a very powerful and convincing emotion. And uh, it, it's, it can overwhelm when you least expect it. And uh, to conquer my own fears and my own self-doubt, I somehow have to find hopefulness amidst the fear. Um, going back onto the mountain, conquering the fear and I was white knuckled when I first learned how to ski again and when I made a right left and a, a right turn and a left turn and a stop and when I knew that I could have a sense of control I rocketed to freedom but it wasn't without fear and uh, I, you know I I I always think of, you know, the acronym FEAR, F-E-A-R, and I, I probably shouldn't say this on your show, but I, I, think of it, I think of it as, you know, um, someone, I heard it once, fuck everything and run, you know, or what is your F-E-A-R, what is your fantasy experience that is real? And when, it, and when I would get to the top of a run that was a double black diamond run filled with bumps, one of the runs on Highlands Mountain um, in the area is called Moment of Truth. And it was such a great metaphor for me. What is my moment of truth? Double black, steep, moguled, bumped up run. And I thought, what is your fantasy? And experience it real, as real. Bring it in to you right here, right now. And Marilyn, that's how I've dealt with my life is um, accepting my reality right now. And it's this acceptance and this dance of with hope in that acceptance and hope coexist. They must. And that's been my life lesson in that what I experience right here, right now, I accept is what it is and it frees me to be hopeful for what the next moment might bring that next moment could be a minute from now an hour from now tomorrow next week but everything I do today right here right now prepares me for what I will be tomorrow so you focus on being in the now Yes. And because when you're going down that mountain and you're in the now, you're not. You worried. have to be. Yeah. You're not worried about, you know, am I going to break a leg? Or am I going to break another? I mean, not my leg. Am I going to break an arm or my other arm? Or, you know, I mean, this is all, this is what I have left. So you don't. Think yes. That. And that's, that's what skiing does for you, right? It, you, it forces you to be so present and in the moment and that every turn I inhale and, and then I exhale and then I inhale and it becomes a dance and I'm focused and I'm looking down the hill and I'm doing everything that someone with their arms and their legs and their full able-bodied capability is able to do, but I'm doing it sitting down. And, but if I bring everything, even if I'm rolling down the street or as I'm with you right here, right now, I'm focused, I'm present. And that's my way of dealing with fear, thinking, okay, it is what it is, Amanda. This is what I'm feeling, but it, I'm, it doesn't have to be that way the next moment from now. And I, if, I, if my acceptance is right here, right now, it does free me to be more hopeful. and. Um, I believe I, you become what you believe, not what you wish for or want. 
you become what you expect and right. feel feel in your heart right you you be, you are what you're experiencing in this moment not the past and not the future right that's and that. so i th i think an element of belief um is really important mm -hmm. and and to understand where that stems from it's not here it's in your heart wow no wonder they wanted you to speak everybody would want you to speak about anything that they could get you to speak about <laughs> <laughs> well thank you Even cheerios <laughs> They're very sweet, but you know, I think it just comes as a, a certain amount of determination and through this um, COVID-19 pandemic, I'm living it too. And we have about 45 to 50 clients in our program that we get mobile every week in our program called Bridging Bionics. And we have two facilities in Colorado where we live and we offer physical therapy and training sessions to all clients with neurological impairments or challenges like I have, and two or three times a week. And that's been taken away from us right well, now. Now what's gonna happen? Well, let's say this goes on for a month, another two months. What, what, are you, what will you be able to do? Or what, what are you planning? Or is there options or what? Well, at the moment, um, all of our clients are at home, right? So some of our physical therapists have helped provide and suggest exercises to do at home for our more mobile clients. But for someone like me, I can get on the physical therapy mat that I have right here, um, but I'm unable to wait there. And I, 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 when you're paralyzed, it really helps to have someone like a physical therapist to move your body for you and with you to help optimize your range of motion. And so um, what we're doing is we've provided free counseling for our clients. Um, it's a new program that we've called um, Redefining Transitions, Building Resiliency. And it's offering free counseling for our clients to help them get through this. But it's also something that we implemented before this pandemic and the outbreak, but now we're doing video counseling and small group counseling as well. Um, because I recognize, and I had to figure this out on my own, Marilyn, that when I was paralyzed, it was a mental game that I had to surmount and overcome on my own. I had to figure it out. And it took five years. It was a real pivotal moment where I had to have that break down moment in order to have the breakthrough. And, uh, and for our clients, we're providing that service. I think the body doesn't have a full chance of healing unless the mental is in place. And so if we can get on top of the mental aspect and help people um, deal with fear, deal with uh, loss of mobility is grief. And so it's grieving the loss of being able to move your body as you did and, and figuring out new ways of movement and how to navigate this, this life from a paralyzed stance, from a wheelchair. And so um, that's what we're doing at the moment is offering this service. Um, we can't, we're really on lockdown. We can't, our, what our program does is we provide um, access to advanced technologies such as bionic exoskeleton suits, whole body vibration, all these advanced technologies that are found in the top rehabilitation centers in the world. We've bypassed the medical system. We've put them in a health club. It's a completely charitable uh, foundation where individuals get to um, move their bodies for next to nothing. We charge a $500 fee for the entire year, which is cheaper than a gym membership. And for about 40% of our clients, we provide complete scholarships. There's no cost at all. And because we've taken cost out of the equation, our clients are getting better. Neuro recovery is possible. Yeah, and, talk about that some. That's yeah. very fascinating. So yeah. 
if yeah. you, um, Dr. Bucky Arita, the founder of neuroplasticity said, all you have to do is stimulate the body and the brain will figure it out. And so, and, and to provide the brain information through stimulating the body. And so even if you're paralyzed, you need to move. We're made for mobility. And so um, what we do is we provide movement and access to all types of technology, uh, combined technologies using whole body vibration with the Galileo um, whole body vibration technologies, which is side alternating vibration. It's how the body is designed to absorb vibration. And, and then that helps with, um, it's a full bodily system workout. It helps with uh, tone reduction and spasticity. It helps with blood circulation, um, bladder bowel regularity. Uh, as soon as I vibrated, I, my, everything operates really efficiently in my body. Um, and it stimulates all of the internal organs as well. But it helps me with weight bearing and to stand upright and uh, bone density. All of these things are critical. So <clears throat> what we're doing is we're seeing a reduction in secondary complications associated with paralysis and a reduction in rehospitalizations. We're in the business of keeping people out of hospitals. And I'm, I'm just grateful that <clears throat> with our program, all of our clients went into this COVID-19 pandemic probably in the best healthy condition that they could be in because of our program. And now I've decided that we're going to use this forced two months or more lockdown um, as a case study of sorts to show the world the value of our program of having ongoing and regular physical therapy and using Ac and accessing advanced technologies like bionic ex exoskeletons, where you're able to stand up, walk over ground with your joints biomechanically aligned as they should. And then you're getting that proprioceptive feedback. You're re rewiring those neuro pathways so that you have the opportunity to regain mobility and potentially to walk again on your own. Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of information. So <laughs> yeah, no, but that's a wow. I mean, and to be able to take this information now based on COVID nineteen, and to be able to use to document this is is beyond extraordinary. Yes, I mean, this is a forced shutdown. Absolutely. And so we are going to use it in an advantageous way. Where when we start up our program, every client's going to have a new evaluation done. We're going to start with a new baseline and do an eight-week study and see where they are. I, I imagine because we had re-evaluations before the program shut down. And so we do re-evaluations every quarter. And so we'll take that information, we'll see loss of uh, mobility, probably muscular atrophy, um, uh, muscle contractions, uh, uh, joint contractures. Um, uh, pray to God we don't have any, um, you know, fractures or uh, mm -hmm. pressure sores, pressure wounds. When people, when you sit, you begin to die. And that's why, and that's a very strong statement, but it's true. And so that's why we, we must keep our bodies moving. And that's my message to every viewer who's at home, who's forced to be at home during this time, in that if you can figure out a, a, a daily workout regimen at home that you can do um, routinely to keep your bodies moving, I swear, it's going to release endorphins in your body. It'll um, help you change your perspective. It'll lift your spirit, uh, help you feel more hopeful and less fearful. Right. And so I think it's, you know, it's up to us and we have to somehow mm -hmm. self-motivate. Right. Well, no, I, I, yes, I mean, I, I have to keep moving too. And I'm used to working out and dancing and, and I'm not, I'm not thin. So I have to really focus. <laughs> Yesterday, I was watching a video about online marketing. 
and I didn't want to just sit here in front of the video. So I got up and I was moving and dancing around while I was listening to it. And if there was something I wanted to write down, if there was something I wanted to write, I paused the video, I paused my Fitbit, I wrote down the information, and I went back and started doing it. And I burned whatever hundreds of calories I burned while I was watching the video instead of just sitting here. And this, because there's a lot of things I want to do now. Mm -hmm. All because I'm in doesn't mean I'm stuck. Exactly, exactly. And it really is it's such a perfect analogy to feeling paralyzed. Right. I mean, I look at paralysis as a life sentence. It's not a death sentence. Thank God, you know, it's not like, um, you know, we have a, a, a you know, a, a disease or a, a degenerative progressive illness. But it is a life sentence mm -hmm. and paralysis is uh it's really difficult to deal with um your people equate it to being imprisoned in your body and uh but i i haven't let that help me hold me back and um if i i figured out that with this technology and we can go back to being invited to test pilot this prototype exoskeleton because I, I swear I dreamed about it. I had this vision and it's the power of intentionality. How long ago and did that start for you? How long ago did the, you start testing? This was um, in 2010, in July, I was invited to be the first person in the world to test pilot this. And I did it and I, could see the world from a different perspective. I was five foot seven again. I could look at people eye to eye. I could have this delicious heart to heart hug. There's a um, distancing that happens when you embrace a person from a wheelchair. When you're standing up, it's heart to heart. And, but then I could, take a step and I stepped with my feet and my knees bending and my weight over my foot stepping in the most natural fluid gait it was as though I had ankles and knees again and I was upright and I was doing it on my own independently and there was something very liberating about that in that I was um, to be able to, yes, so I always had a spotter behind me to make sure that I didn't fall, but I was doing it on my own. So I figured out how to raise enough money to buy my own. I put 130,000 steps on that robot around my parking lot. And then I thought, you have that I now. And you have that now. Well, I did. It's now at the program because I thought, why do I have to be the lucky girl that gets to walk in a robot? If I can do it, we could get an entire community up and walking. This is a, um, a device that it can uh, be for someone who's five foot tall to six foot three. We've actually had someone six foot six get in this particular device. And so um, it's adjustable this way and this way. So and let me <laughs> ask you some things about the device. And then I want to um, yes. want you to talk about fun, fundraising. I don't want to oh. forget that. I know that's very important. <laughs> yes. Um, so this device, mm -hmm. how, what does it kind of weigh? So this particular device that I use is weighs anywhere from 45 to 50 pounds. But the, when it stands up, it's a robot. It's got artificial intelligence, um, a variable assist modality that will help you. And you can actually, it'll stand you up. You don't feel the weight of the device as, you're, as it's standing you up, but it can actually, um, you can power down the device so that it will help you. It's rehabilitative. If, uh, if it's someone who's had a stroke, the um, un unaffected side gets to walk under its own natural power. And then the affected side that's had the stroke, the hemi hemiplegic side, gets to walk under robotic assist. And mm -hmm. so, and the artificial intelligence can gauge how much input 
the person's providing to help that person complete the step. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, okay. Somewhat. So, yeah, somewhat. Um, so and we have we have different devices in our program. That's so what I said. it's about options. It's kind of like you might choose to drive an Audi and someone else might prefer a Toyota truck. I don't know. Um, or a BMW. <laughs> and so um it, it, it but they're customized for each individual. And so uh, we use an indigo exoskeleton from a company called Carter Hannafin. We have, um, it, it, as part of an investigational study in our program, it's called a Kyogo Domo skeleton from Canada that is currently getting its FDA approval. And that's why we're using it under a special IRB protocol out of a university in California. And that's under investigational use in our program. We've got someone at something else, a soft exoskeleton called the new gate system. It's a, it's a harnessed wearable system. Um, and then, so we use all of those technologies in combination with other advanced technologies, such as whole body vibration, lasers, um, there you go. There's so that picture of the exoskeleton that you're seeing. That's the exo from Exobionics, and it's a it, it simulates. Imagine the internal skeleton um, of your body. It it replicates that in that it's got a frame that encompasses the outside of the body. On the back, it's got two batteries. It's got four motors at the hips and then um, at the knees. And then it's got a gyroscope in the back. Okay, it's got, so we, yeah. Okay, so we don't talk. Maybe it'll come up. I'm not. Can you get it to come up? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's it's up. I see it. It is up. Okay, yeah. I don't see it. And it's um so Anand's on it and he's got the the image right there and is showing the exoskeleton and you can see I'm five foot seven there. I'm standing and I, when I walk, I walk with crutches. So it's not a hands free device yet. And as I take a step, um, it's got sensors. This particular exoskeleton has sensors in the feet. And so when I hit a forward target and a lateral target, um, it waits for me to shift my weight correctly before it takes another step. And so, so where do you, you just you, you use that at? Um, at the gym, right? That's where you use it. Yes. I mean, you don't wear it. No, I so used what, to yeah. have it at home, but then I gifted it to the community. Okay. And these devices are $175,000 a piece. And so they're not affordable. Um, they're cost prohibitive for individuals to acquire on their mm -hmm. own. And that's why I chose to create Bridging Bionics so that everybody had access, whoever met the inclusion criteria for this device, so that everybody had access to these exoskeletons. The Indigo exoskeleton is in a modular design. It comes apart in three different, in actually five different pieces, and it only weighs 26 pounds. It's quite different. It doesn't have the backpack on it. And um, yeah. so th True. there are there are different models, but it's also one hundred and seventy five thousand yeah. dollars. I mean, that's crazy. Me. OK, so I want to have a couple. Of, yeah, I have yeah. a couple of questions. So number one. OK, so what have you noticed? Yourself that having used these um, these equipments, these technologies, what have you noticed about your paralysis? What I've noticed um, by having regular access to these technologies is that it's helping me maintain my bone density. We're prone to osteoporosis and to fractures, to breaking our bones because we're sitting all the time and we're not weight bearing. So weight bearing is really important. We need to align our joints as they should. And that's what the exoskeleton does. It puts you in perfect biomechanical alignment. And then when you walk in an exoskeleton, unlike a treadmill, um, you're walking over ground. And so what happens is as you walk through space over ground, you think the world is going by you and you're getting those visual cues. And so the proprioceptive feedback to help you mm -hmm. go through space and so that you can rewire those neuropathways. And there's, um, 
studies that have been done that just pure robotic assist alone standing up in an exoskeleton and walking over ground is beneficial and you're actually firing paralyzed muscles they're working in their own way and so um, if you've got a little bit of muscle power there we can uh, use a variable assist modalities to help activate and, and Amanda, what muscles, about other yes. people? What about other people in your community, children or other? <clears throat> what have you noticed from yes. other members? Of well, we've noticed that um, we've provided uh, probably about a hundred and since the beginning inception of our program four years ago, we've helped about one hundred and twenty-five individuals in our community to regain mobility. In some cases they've regained the ability to walk again on their own and they've actually walked. The goal is to get out of these devices, right? So it's, um, these are tools to help regain mobility. For me, it's about maintaining my range of motion, my bone density, my yeah, flexibility. Terrific. Yeah, you're terrific. I mean, Thank terrific. you. But, yeah, yeah. but for some of our clients who are newly injured, and they're in that acute window of neuro recovery, say anywhere from you know up to two years after they've sustained an, an injury, they're in this amazing window where we don't know the possibilities. We've got a couple of clients in our program right now that every week we would see improvements. I can send you videos if you go onto our Facebook page, you'll see videos, this particular guy, is, his name's Mason, and he was paralyzed um, on March 9th, a year ago. And uh, he, when he came to us in our program, he couldn't stand on his own. Now he's able to stand fully weight bear on his own. And then he took his first step on his own. And now then the week before we had to close our program down, the left leg fired and he took three steps with the left leg unassisted. And we were just waiting, thinking, okay, next week, we're gonna see the right leg kick in. And then the program shut down and it's like, oh. Oh okay. my God. And so, you know, we're giving him tools and um, things to do is really motivated and he's working in his garage at home and we're keeping in touch with our clients the best that we can. But, um, you know, we've got exciting things happening because our clients get to come three, sure. four times a week. So is this the only, uh, in Colorado where you are, is this the only um, center for what you do? Yes. Do you have, okay. Are you looking to grow it? Or yes. you, how, what are you it's, looking it's, to do? Well, at the moment, we're using this year to really refine what we're doing. The technology is really expensive. And because it's a charitably funded program, I raise money, I'm a fundraiser. And so I just constantly raise money so that our clients don't have to pay and they have access to this. And so uh, we had a gala that was planned for July 5th, which we've canceled. And um, it just breaks my heart because it's our signature fundraising event for the year. We're trying to decide if we're going to postpone it or just cancel it until 2021 and then do something virtual. I'm not sure. But um, these are tough times. And so, you know, we've got, uh, it's, it's a really unique program. It's the most, it's the only program of its kind in the country and then in the world, in that we are providing free access to regular physical therapy that's ongoing. And we've got clients that have been in our program for four years and they're still showing recovery. We're still getting results. And so we're in this uh, proof of concept phase where we um, are doing uh, studies through grants and, um, to, and with data collection to show the value of our program and what it is when you don't have to worry about cost. You think that these exoskeletons, they are cost prohibitive, and they're only found in the top rehabilitation centers in the nation and in the world. And if, unless you're an inpatient or you have an insurance policy where you can get maybe up to eight weeks of physical therapy to use one of these devices in a top rehabilitation center, then it's taken away from you. You go back to your community 
and you you have to figure out life on your own how to maintain your range of motion your flexibility your standing um and it's just it's virtually impossible and that's why i created bridging bionics so that i believe exercise is medicine but also um it's our human right to have access to healing therapies and advanced technologies if they're out there they should be used by people yes. by regular people right by regular people i mean it's something that i thought oh my gosh this is helping me with my quality of life when i walk i feel so much better it's like i've lifted a veil from my head i can think more clearly you think of what happens to you after you've danced around your living room and you've got those endorphins going and you feel vibrant and alive well that's how i feel after i've walked and so it should be accessible and available and that's why i'm motivated and compelled to keep raising the money if i can create a satellite program elsewhere i'll do it um but it, it it's contingent on fundraising right. capabilities so tell everybody I, I know we know that you were a cnn top hero for 2018 of course <laughs> so tell everybody what like what you need money what do you need and where do they go and how do they do it and that kind of stuff yes if you go on to if anybody uh, is inspired to contribute to our program for sustainability during these hard times to it, we're, we're in the business of giving the gift of mobility and there's nothing more beautiful than giving the gift of mobility because you can feel good about yourself and so rather than giving money we give money to give the gift of mobility and to go on to bridgingbionics.org um bridging like a bridge across a river bridging bionics plural b i o n i c s dot org and you'll be able to donate there to contribute uh, to giving the gift of mobility to sustain our program and keep our population and our community up and walking again and those funds will go directly into our clients um 75 dollars is the cost of the direct take-home cost for each physical therapist per hour and so that's what they get paid per hour. We're very transparent, we're accountable to the world. So if you wanna, if $150 will gift two mobility sessions for a client. Um, let me see, $7,200 will gift one year of mobility sessions at two sessions a week. So if we break it down in those terms, that, that will give you a, a, give your audience a, something to, um, tangible to relate to mm -hmm. perfect yeah it's um it's extraordinary i mean <laughs> of course when you're not involved in it on a regular basis you have no idea so I no. you really don't and there are things that you've said you know that you take for granted every day you take mm -hmm. that and this is a time when our taking things for granted are knocking us in the head exactly right? and you know we're not I'm in a wheelchair and uh, I, I don't think woe is me. I am very grateful actually for my life. I have no excuses and I'm a really happy person. Um, but, you know, we're not meant to walk with our arms. I'm, I've got some guns on me, but that's from 28 years of paralysis. We're meant to walk on our legs. We're meant to be mobile. And I encourage every one of your viewers to somehow keep mobile in your darkest hour. It's up to you and you only. Destiny, destiny waits for no woman and no man. It's up to you to find the motivation to somehow um, get out of your seat and to move your bodies, to be mobile, to be the bridge. And uh, to your body will thank you. And I, I, I know that together we will get through this. Mm -hmm. No question. So I just want to remind everybody, you know, in these final moments, if you have a question, a comment, whatever you like, you want to talk to Amanda, you want to talk to me, 919-518-9773. <laughs> Or you're welcome to join us in the chat and ask questions in there as well. Just put your name, video, uh, your name under the video, or you can come in on Skype still, Skype Voice, 
not a picture. So that would be computers to the number two K voice and come in here and ask your question. Um, and we'd love to be able to assist you in any way that we can. And then I'm not, do you have my uh, books, Andy? Your book? Books. Books? No, I yes. don't. Oh my gosh, yeah. Marilyn. Yeah. So I am writing books and my books are a series in just one afternoon, listening into the hearts of. So the first one was men. The next one was twins and millennials. Now it's uh, people impacted by opioid addiction. And then after that is black fathers and families that have lost a child. And I go on from there. So these are engaging stories. And when you turn on your listening, we, there are things that we hear that we don't hear normally. And you hear people and you hear it's a bridge to understanding and recognizing who we are and, and our humanity. And these are very important stories. And people open up with their hearts. So uh, on, they're all available on, on Amazon. And um, love you to check them out. So Amanda, um, mm -hmm. your story is phenomenal. Your, your mm -hmm. light is phenomenal. The way you have got, I mean, you are a wonderful representation of the work that you're doing. And the, ben mm -hmm. and the benefit, because you, you, you show it, you've seen it. You're a terrific role model. So, you know, yeah, what were we going to say? Thank you. And I, a role, role model, R-O-L-L. -L. <laughs> and a R-O-L-E. Yeah, yeah, both. But you know what? I didn't choose this, Marilyn. And um, who knows why? And I've asked myself, why me? For many many years and uh it's not up to me i feel like i was put in this wheelchair and in this predicament for a reason and if i can give back to humanity if i can through my speaking and through sharing with others when you have an idea it grows when it's shared and uh it through sharing we come together and we build community and um, so I, you know, if I can just bring my light and uh, infuse that into the world so that others can be more hopeful, then so that's... Like, and you do, and you do that very well. I mean, mm -hmm. skiing down the mountain, black diamonds, double black diamonds, oh, <laughs> and you, dr you drive and all, everything. Do you yes, have drive I, also I, like a um, car? I, I drive and it's my, my freedom, thank goodness. I have also, I just went out in Colorado yesterday and um, I have a mini tank that is called an action track chair. And so I went on this uh, trail, social distancing with my best friend and my dog and I got out into the wilderness. And so I have, I figured out different forms of mobility other than the exoskeleton. I have a hand cycle, I cross country ski, which I just use with my arms and it's a full cardio workout. And so um, I do whatever I can, whatever you do as an able-bodied woman, I do in my wheelchair. I'm just doing it a little differently. So, so anybody can do anybody can do about anything. Yeah, well, I mean, every, every anybody can we do can it. with the gift of technology. In this day and age, I'm very grateful if I, you know, to be paralyzed in this day and age where I have access to amazing technologies and the fact that I live in this community um, that's been very giving and supportive of my endeavors and to live in the United States. There are, you know, individuals I've with the CNN heroes uh, honor, I was contacted by people from all over the world, from third world countries where they don't have access to this technology. And they were begging me, pleading me, please, Amanda, can I come? I will relocate. I will do anything I can to come be in your program. Give me a chance. And I, I had to say no. And that breaks my heart. This technology needs to be you accessible to say, and why, affordable. Why do you have to say 
why do you have to say no? If they have the money, can they come or they can't? Or, or are I you limited with how many people you can work We're with? limited. We're at capacity. I have four physical therapists, right. two trainers. We're working five days a week, nine to five, in two different facilities. And we're limited with the technology as well. I mean, at $175,000 a pop uh, for these exoskeletons and then um, to pay the PTs and to keep the program going. So until I can replicate it, then yeah, I have to, I have to turn people, I've had to turn so many people around down and it just, it does, it breaks my heart. There's a need. Okay, everybody, are you listening? Everybody from home, everybody, no matter where you are, I know we're all kind of locked down together. This is something, you know, we're home. Sometimes you can't do the things you want to do, but this is something you can do. Exactly. You know, I'm, you know we're always looking, this is something you can do today. So please go to bridgingbionics.org mm -hmm. and just... Give whatever you can because this does make a difference. And I, you know, and we're going to pray that, I mean, I, you know, you, you, I think about all these people that are locked down and I never thought of, you know, people who are in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. who are locked down and can't have their exercise. Well, That's and really lockdown is so in a weird way so similar to paralysis and being really being locked down we're um we're stifled where it's forced uh, to but yeah. we ha can take it upon ourselves turn it around um we can and think of it right here right now in this moment and that whatever we do today prepares us for the person we will be tomorrow. And when we get through this together and the hardships and the grief and the challenges around this, we're going to come through it. And yes, uh, it's think of it as an awakening of sorts, an awakening of I don't have to think yeah. of yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not, it is an awakening. Mm -hmm. There is no question. It is an awakening. And one thing I will say, which besides the fact how much I love you, um, this is, you know, this is this time is causing all of many of us, all of us, whoever, mm -hmm. take it on to be mindful of the things you're not normally mindful of. Yes. No different than putting myself in your shoes or in that chair, being mindful of, you know, not being able to use a, a part of my body that I used, and then at the same time remembering what it felt like to be able to use that again. So for all of you that are home, you know, being mindful and remembering one day you're going to be going out and driving that car to the mall again and all of those things that we are not in touch with now, we will be once again. That's how, that's how Amanda can feel when she's walking. Yes, and it's, thank you so much. And it's a, it's a time for self-care. Uh, right. This is, we can get so paralyzed in our minds. We sure can. And so, this is a time to uh, turn that around and to, yes. um, to really love ourselves and love one another. And I, I really thank you. And I just my I send my love to you thank and you. for all that you do for the world and for your listeners. So thank it's you. such, a, such a pleasure and an honor thank and you. a privilege. Thank you so much for, for gracing us today, Amanda. You're lovely. And Oh my God, I'm going to be thinking about you all day. So everybody out there, thank you mm -hmm. so much for being here. It's been an honor to, to spend this time with you. Thank you for taking the time to spend it with Amanda and me and I'm not somewhere down in the corner. We love you. <laughs> let's just, let's do, let's just do our best at whatever we're doing mm -hmm. now. Let's just, you know, let's just do our best. That's it. Just do your best. And with that, mm -hmm. bye everybody. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it 
in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net. <laughs>